you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. We actually want to begin this question by noting the last sentence, which states that the force exerted by the track on the block will be zero if the block barely makes it through the loop the loop. Now, what that really means is if we took a look at the block at point C right here, there would be only one force acting on the block, and it would be the gravitational force. In essence, the block is in free fall. The track for just a moment is not touching the block, and so the only force acting on the block is mg. Now, the block is traveling in a circle, and we know that motion in a circle is dictated by the following equation. We have the centripetal force equaling mv squared divided by r. Now, again, the only force that's keeping this block traveling in a circle is the gravitational force mg, so we can substitute in mg for the centripetal force. We could then divide both sides of the equation by the mass, and then we'll multiply both sides of the equation by r so that we can isolate the v squared. We can actually then take the square root so that we can solve for v. Now, this is a result that we're going to hold on to and refer back to shortly. Now, the fact that there is kinetic friction present between the block and the track means that the work energy theorem can be applied, but in the following form. Essentially, we have the non-conservative work being done on the block equal to the final energy minus the initial energy. Now, when it comes to this non-conservative work being done on the block, that's occurring as the block travels from point A over here to point B. We note that during that trip from point A to point B, as the block slides along to the right, there is a kinetic frictional force acting on it that we can denote as F sub K. Now, the displacement of the block is in this direction. The block is traveling to the right. So if you note from this picture, the angle between the displacement and Fk would be 180 degrees. Now, the reason that we're mentioning the angle is because work is equal to the force multiplied by the distance and then multiplied by the cosine of the angle. Now, looking at the right-hand side of this equation with the final and initial energies, we know that initially the only energy present would be the potential energy that's stored in the spring. There is no gravitational potential energy initially and there is no kinetic energy either. In the final position when the block is at the top of the circle, the spring is relaxed so there would no longer be any spring potential energy. There would be only gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy. Let's go ahead and replace the kinetic energy, the gravitational potential energy, and the initial spring potential energy with their corresponding expressions. We're going to pull the work down here just to clear up some space. Now you might want to pause the equation, just make sure you understand where all of the expressions are coming from. Notice that our goal is ultimately to find d. If you look back at the picture, d was the distance by which the spring was compressed. Let's make sure we don't confuse that with this d, which was the distance that the block traveled from point A to point B along that frictioned surface. In fact, let's replace this d with the segment AB, just to avoid confusion. Let's also remember that the kinetic frictional force is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Also remember that the normal force would be equal to mg because the block is resting on a flat surface during that frictioned part of its motion. And so the gravitational force that points downward would be exactly balanced by the normal force. So in other words, again, the magnitude of the normal force is equal to mg. So we're going to replace the normal force here with mg. And so this will be our final form of the kinetic frictional force that we'll be plugging in for F. Now, let's also not forget that the velocity v was given by the expression the square root of rg, so we have to replace that velocity with that expression. And since that square root of rg is squared, it can actually just be written as rg. Now, at this point, we're just going to go ahead and plug in all the known values. Notice that the height that the block reaches is simply twice the radius. It's basically the diameter. And so if you'd like, you can replace h with 2r. Now we'll go ahead and plug in the known values. So there they are. Notice again the angle for the cosine was 180 degrees. Why don't we process this on our calculator, this as well as this. We could even multiply the 1 half by 78.4. 
we can add these two like terms and then subtract that result over to the other side. Finally, we'll divide both sides by negative 39.2 and then we'll square root both sides to isolate D. And D turns out to be exactly 0.75 meters. You could also move the decimal over two places to the right if you need it in centimeters. So an equivalently correct answer would be 75 centimeters. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon. Also subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you're welcome to send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.